Hi, I'm Ilana, and welcome to my channel, Unabridged Adventures. And today I'm going to be doing a July wrap-up, and then also a quick haul for all of the new books that I have just recently got. So, yeah, stick around and check that out. So, I just want to start off by saying this is going to be a pretty messy video, and for that I apologize. The reason that my bookshelf is so messy is because I'm moving into my dorm this Thursday, and yeah, I have to have everything ready for that, and I currently don't, so I am surrounded by boxes and packing material right now. So, yeah. Um, also, washing machine broke last week, so that's making things a lot more interesting. And overall, the universe is trying to get back at me for something. Don't know what. But let's just jump right into this. I have my laptop here so that I can go on to Goodreads just so I can remember what all I read this month because it was a long one. I read five, I finished five books this month and I started two books. So I'll be going over those five and the ratings that I gave them and then I'm going to be talking about the two books that I started. So yeah. I first read The Mysterious Affair at Styles. I listened to it on audiobook, um, and that is by Agatha Christie, and I gave it a three-star rating just because it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't... it was average. I've read better from Agatha Christie, and so I think since it's the first Poirot book that you're kind of getting to know the character, and it was kind of a meh murder. Um, I didn't care as much about solving the murder or how they did it, so yeah, it was a three-star read, but it was good. I would recommend it, but I still liked and then there were none better. So then moving on to I read oh, this big thing. I read The Way of Kings in July, or I finished The Way of Kings in July, and I of course gave that five stars because, I mean, it's Brandon Sanderson, and it's The Way of Kings. And apparently I've accidentally tricked my best friend into reading the entire Cosmere. And Mason, I am so sorry, but also very excited that you're reading it. So, sorry for the whole accidentally tricking you part. I, I didn't tell him that they're all connected, and I didn't tell him that the Stormlight Archive is going to be about 10 books. So, yeah. Anyway, then I went on to read Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, and I gave that a four-star review because I think it was an incredible book, and it was so relevant at the time that I was reading it. I mean, it's relevant all the time, but this was during a lot of the protests, and speaking of which, we still need to support protesters, and so there will be links down below to support the Black Lives Matter movement. But back to the review, um, it was a very good book, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. It was a lot to read, and it got very dark, as you would expect in a book about slavery. And a lot of the points that she made about how easy it is to accept slavery as the social norm was so interesting and so well put and well done, and I loved it. It just, it didn't feel like a five-star read. Um, but I'm gonna go on and I'm doing the Octavia E. Butler slow read um, that Onyx Pages is starting, and I think we are technically supposed to read Kindred in September, but because I'm starting uni, I wanted to go ahead and read it one time through and then go ahead and reread it whenever that starts just so I can really understand everything. And there were definitely parts that I don't think were meant for me as a white woman. Like I don't think I understood everything that she was talking about, but it was absolutely an amazing book and I would recommend checking it out. Okay, so then at the same time that I was reading Kindred, I was also reading The Stars and the Blackness Between Them, and that book... I cried. I have not cried because of a book in so long, 
but I literally spent like half an hour crying at like two in the morning whenever I started reading this book because that it, it hits hard it hits hard and I I loved it I gave it five stars uh, and it was amazing it's about two black girls falling in love one is from Trinidad and she had she got caught canoodling, let's say, um, with another girl back home, and her mom sent her to live with her dad and, in the U.S. And so then she falls in love, but then there's a lot of talk about um, chronic and terminal illnesses and dealing with death and imprisonment and a lot of Okay, that, that book ruined me, and I enjoyed every second of it, so I 100% recommend checking that out. Okay, and the last thing that I read this month, or last month, I guess, time isn't real anymore. It just doesn't exist, was Graveminder. And I gave it three stars, you know, I put up an actual review of it on my page. You should definitely go check that out if you want to know more. It was just okay. I, I didn't hate it. I'm gonna unhaul it though because I'm trying to only keep like four and five star reads on my shelf. So this is being unhauled. Two books that I started. I can't show you because The Dragon Reborn is holding up my phone right now, but I also started, oh, Warbreakers on my Kindle. I don't know why. I thought I had it in paperback. No, um, I also started Warbreaker with my Cosmere buddy read and it's amazing. I've fallen a bit behind, but it's very good. And the Star Trek nerd in me that will never die um, keeps confusing the whole, like, your breath to my breath thing with, like, your mind to my mind, your th my thoughts to your thoughts, and, like, the whole mind meld Vulcan thing. And I'm loving that, so... Now you know just how nerdy I am, but you know, this is a booktube account. You should have expected that. Okay, moving on to the very long haul that I did not expect to have to do, but my absolutely amazing family friend from back home, you're not going to see this, but I love you, and I know I already put stuff up on my Instagram, but I want to do a serious haul for this because... She asked for a wish list of books that I would like, and I expected her to buy me a book off of that wish list, but no, she bought me every book off of that wish list, and she spoils me so much. So, getting into that to begin with, we have A Song Below Water, which I'm so excited to read. I know that everyone's been getting really into this, and I love the back that just says young, black, secretly magical. Like this is this is the vibes that we really need this summer. Is we because you know things haven't been great for anyone, but specifically for black girls. <laughs> okay, um next we have a song of Wraith and Ruin and look at oh it's so beautiful. If you can't tell, the cover's like this dark green, and I love that. And then the gold continues on to the back. Oh, look at that. And then it's this gorgeous green color with gold embossing. Oh, I love it so much. I'm just loving seeing more African-inspired mythology because there's just so much there and it's so beautiful and wonderful and we need to celebrate that. And for those of you that don't know, one of my absolutely favorite series, absolute favorite series is, um, my brain just went nowhere, is the Children of Orisha series. I think that's what it is, but Children of Blood and Bone and then Children of Virtue and Vengeance. It's just, I love it. And I also love Binti and all of those books. But moving on, she got me an Ember in the Ashes and I love it. I have heard so many amazing things 
um, the story ain't over, the YouTube channel. Uh, I can't think of her name right now. Oh my gosh. I'm sorry. I'm exhausted today. But she absolutely loves this series and I've been meaning to read it because she always mentions it. And I'm so excited too. And the cover is just beautiful. I love it. And speaking of beautiful covers, look at this. I have been so excited. This was one of my most anticipated releases. Oh, I didn't even notice that. It's got a little like, can you see that? I don't know. There. It's got like a little imprint on it. I think that's of the publishers or something. But, and then the back is... Ugh. For those of you, I, I already mentioned this, is that I'm a religion and like mythology nerd. And so the fact that she brings in like some Zoroastrian stuff into this book is lovely and I'm so excited. And you know, I'm just here for girls being monsters and monster girlfriends. So I'm so excited to read this. Okay, what's next? Um, oh, yes. Magical music playing in the background for this. But just look at how gorgeous this is. It is, this isn't, a, this is like directly on the hard cover and okay so funny story is that I read the first half of Little Women in like sixth grade I'd say but I stopped reading it and I put it down and I completely like DNF'd unhauled even though I did not know those terms I just like I can't I cannot finish this book because I was so invested in Joe and Lori getting together that whenever I thought they wouldn't I was just like you know what I can't I cannot take this like sixth grade me just snapped and got rid of the book and then years later I was telling this to my mom whenever the movie came out and she goes what are you talking about of course they got together at the end and I I don't know if she's just saying that to me to get me to pick it up but you know it worked I I am so invested in that couple and I'm so excited to read it in that absolutely gorgeous hardback that I am forever going to display. <sighs> okay, moving on because I could talk about that book for ages. Um, I got Beneath the Rising by Pramee Muhammad. Please tell me if I said that name right in the comments down below because I'm terrible at pronouncing names despite mine being a mess to pronounce. So anyway, I'm very excited for this. I'm just going to read you the back because I don't know if a lot of you have heard of this before, but at the back it says, Hope has a price. Nick Bursad has always enjoyed a quiet life in the shadows of his best friend, child prodigy and technical genius Joanna Johnny Chambers. And first of all, I love girls having like masculine nicknames. Anyway, moving on. But all that is about to end, when Johnny invents a clean reactor that could eliminate fossil fuels and change the world, she awakens primal evil ancient ones set on subjugating humanity. From the oldest library in the world to the ruins of Nineveh, hunted at every turn, they will need to trust each other completely to survive. So I love a lot of things about this. I love the fact that they're going to be traveling and going to see different, like, ruins and libraries and all of that. I love having a strong, like, male-female friendship. I have- my best friend is a guy and we need to see more of this in fiction. It's, so I love that and I- I just love everything about this book. So. I hope I'm going to love the book itself, and we'll see. Okay, so, let's see, I have to move some stuff over to get to the last book that she got me. Okay, so I've heard good and bad things about Serpent and Dove, but I am excited to read it, and you know, I am always interested in like marriage of convenience, arranged marriages, like that sort of story. 
of like, well, I guess I'm stuck with this person now. We better figure out how to live together. Um, and I am just excited to see what happens here. And, you know, we'll see. I'll probably do a review of this whenever I get done, but I really hope that I'll like it because the cover is beautiful and shiny and lovely. And I also just love reading about, like, witches because... Oh, I didn't even see the literal serpent and dove on the back, but love that. Okay. So, that, are, that is all the books that my wonderful family friend got me. And so, I did buy these books myself, the ones coming up. A lot of them was to get free shipping on dorm stuff. Um, because I would go to order something on Amazon and then they'd be like, oh, you can either pay $6 in shipping or you can buy a $6 book to get free shipping. And I'm like, of course I'll take the book. So I got A Lady's Guide to Celestial Mechanics by Olivia Waite. And this is her debut book, but I am very excited because I've been wanting to get into historical romances more... And for those of you that don't know, I am going to be an aerospace engineer or majoring in aerospace engineering. And so the whole like fact that this surrounds astronomy and like celestial mechanics and all of that, I'm excited for. I love like Victorian female scientists doing their thing. And you know, I just need some like happy queer girls in my life. So I'm just going to read the back for you guys. As Lady Mulcany, there you go with that, watches her ex-lover's sham of a wedding, she wishes herself anywhere else. It isn't until she finds a letter from the Countess of Moth, which, cool name, um, looking for someone to translate a groundbreaking French astronomy text that she knows where to go. Showing up at the Countess's London home, she hopes to find a challenge, not a woman who takes her breath away. Catherine St. Day looks forward to a quiet widowhood once her late husband's scientific le legacy is fulfilled. She expects to hand off the translation and wash her hands of the project. Of the project. Instead, she is intrigued by the young woman who shows up at her door, begging to be allowed to do the work, and she agrees to let Lucy stay. But as Catherine finds herself longing for Lucy, everything she believes about herself and her life is tested. While Lucy spends her days interpreting the complicated French text, she spends her night falling in love with the alluring Catherine, but sabotage and old wounds threaten to sever the threads that bind them. Can Lucy and Catherine find the strength to stay together, or are they doomed to be star-crossed lovers? And I'm excited. I, I don't think you can really see the cover that well. I'm going to have to put a image of it up in the corner. But, you know, I've been wanting to get more into historical romance. I've been seeing, like... Mayana Reads um, get into historical romance, and uh, Chandler, and I can't think of her channel's name, it's probably something really easy that I'm just forgetting, um, but I've seen everyone get into historical romances, and that's something that I've always loved. I love Pride and Prejudice and all of that, so I'm excited, and I figured why not start off with some happy sapphic scientists. So then I got City of Fallen Angels because I'm trying to get this edition of all of the Immortal Instruments because I got the first three box set in this edition and I want to finish it off with these. I don't want to like mix and match. So yeah, I got this and then to get free shipping I got Red Sister by Mark Lawrence and I love the Warrior Nun trope. I've been watching Warrior Nun on uh, Netflix and I don't know. I don't know how to feel about it. It's a lot of what the heck is happening, but I'm excited. Like, we love badass women just, you know, kicking butts, taking names, and not needing a gun. So then, these two books, the last two books, because I know this is getting super long, but these last two books I got because... I saw that the one went on sale, and I noticed that the other one was available, and I'm like, I've been waiting to get both of these books for about a year, and I'm going off to college, 
I should just treat myself for this because I'm not going to be buying books once I get to college. I'm probably going to break that promise to myself, but you know, I deserve this. So first off, I got Gods of Jade and Shadow, and the cover is beautiful. And I... This has so many things that I am interested in. It has non-European mythology, it has death gods, two things that I love put together, and then it follows a young woman, and you know, I'm, I'm so excited to read this. I've been wanting to read it for the longest time, oh, and it's set during the 1920s, a decade that I am fascinated with, so you know, I just love it. And you know, if NPR gives something a good review, you know that it's good. I trust NPR. Okay, and last, but certainly not least, the book that I have been waiting for and that probably got me back into reading just by hearing about It's Gideon the Ninth, and I'm just Okay, I'm not even going to say something, just, just look at it. Just look at that. I, I love everything about this. I know that the uh, paperback is supposed to have extra content, but this went on sale because the paperback is more expensive. And I'm not about to pay $25 for any book. Just, you know what, just, just soak it in. Just soak it in. Oh, love this. The Emperor needs necromancers. The ninth necromancer needs a swordswoman. Gideon has a sword, some dirty magazines, and no more time for undead nonsense. I love this. I love everything about it. I'm so excited to read it. You know, sci-fi, sapphic, Swordswomen. Those three S's, I will read anything. Literally anything. Like, if y'all have any recommendations based off of that, please, please drop them down below because I need more of that in my life. So that is all the books that I got. I'm so excited to read all of them. I don't know what to read next after I finish The Dragon Reborn. I'm probably just gonna go on to the next book in The Wheel of Time. But yeah, that has been my mess of a haul and July wrap up. And you know, my life is a mess right now. So I'm just going to enjoy books while I can. <laughs> so yeah, uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. And you know, I'm not going to say that my videos are normally better than this because they're not. <laughs> we all know that. Um, but yeah, I'm so tired right now. I'm probably gonna cut most of this, but who knows? Oh, things that I need to say. Uh, like and subscribe down below, please. You should definitely go check out Ronit of Valeria's channel. I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. I might not be. Um, but he just started a booktube channel and his first video is already amazing. And he's a part of my Cosmere read-along and just a great guy. Um, next, I have links down below to support Black Lives Matter and places to donate. You should check that out. You should also sign up for the anti-racism daily newsletter if that sounds interesting to you. And yeah, have a great day and that's all for now.